the stage our next spotlight session, Amanda Ellis and her guest, Hank Rogers. Aloha, everybody. Aloha, my kako. Greetings to you all. If you'd like to take seats, we have a fantastic spotlight session now coming up with the inimitable Hank Rogers. Yes, that Hank Rogers of the recent uh, Tetris movie fame, but we're not going to talk about Tetris today. We're going to talk about renewable energy solutions. And for those of you who have been keeping up to date with the latest, you will know that we're still at some 80% of our global energy system being fossil fuels. And I arrived in Hawaii, a total climate despondent, having just come from Geneva as ambassador. And it was meeting Hank Rogers, who is now, I think, ready to join us on the stage. It was meeting Hank Rogers who really turned things around. Because Hank, against all odds, after telling the governor of the state of Hawaii that we needed 100% renewable energy and having the governor turn around and say, well, that's magical Harry Potter thinking. Hank got it done. And so while Hank is famous for very many things, for me, the thing that I love most about him is his signature line, I don't just have hope, I have determination. We will do this. And so now, thanks to Hank, I'm a climate optimist because I've seen what is possible and what is being done in Hawaii, thanks to Hank. So Hank, tell us a little bit about the transformative role you played in helping Hawaii get to its first 100% renewable energy challenge. And was Hawaii the first state in the nation? We were the, f <coughs> we were the first na state in the nation, but here, the words I use is, I don't have hope, I have determination. You have hope too, come on. I don't have hope, I have <laughs> determination. Determination completely it takes away hope. hope. Hope kind of makes me feel or makes I think people feel that somebody else is going to come and help us and do something, throw us a, you know, um, I don't know, a, a life preserver. But no, we have to swim our way out of this. This is us. <laughs> it's up to us. It's not up to somebody else. So anyway, um, so I sold a company in 2005. A month after I sold my company, I found myself in uh, the back of an ambulance with, uh, with a heart attack. I had a 100% blockage of the widow maker, which according to the nurse kills 95% of the people who have that happen to them. Um, in that ambulance, I made up my mind that I wasn't going to die that day. I was going to, uh, because I had stuff to do. I said, I still have stuff to do. And, uh, you know, I thought about it afterwards and, you know, I, I had already made enough money so my family didn't need me anymore. My children, <laughs> already graduated from university, so they didn't need me anymore. I was pretty much done with all the things that, you know, normally you think these are your goals in life, is take care of the family. And um, so then I thought, okay, what is it that's going to upset me if I didn't do something about it by the end of my, the next end of my life? And so I, I searched for my bucket list, uh, my missions in life. And uh, in the recovery room, I was thinking about this and I'm reading the newspaper and there's a little article in the back of the newspaper. Now, this is the back of the Hawaii newspaper now. This is like by the obituaries. It said, oh, by the way, we're gonna kill all the coral by the end of the century. I'm going, you, you idiots, what are you talking about? So it said, well, what's causing that? It's ocean acidification. What's causing that? Carbon dioxide. What's causing that? We are. And then I... <laughs> Then I, you know, I, I did a little bit of research afterwards. Um, you know, carbon dioxide is causing climate change. So my first mission is to end the use of carbon-based fuel. And uh, I decided, because I live in Hawaii, that Hawaii's gonna be, because Hawaii's my room, I, I have to clean my room before I ask other people to clean their room. And uh, so I, I created the Blue Planet Foundation and uh, we set about figuring out how to do this. And as you say, I met with Governor Lingle at the time. Um, she said, you don't know anything about this, do you? And I said, no, I do not, but I will. And yeah, and uh, 
fast forward, um, we passed lots and lots of legislation. We had to bring the people on our side. We had children go door to door and exchange 300,000 light bulbs, thereby having a conversation between a child and adult about energy efficiency and climate change. That conversation led to us being able to pass a mandate. We were the first state in the country to have a mandate of 100% renewable energy, in our case, by 2045. And at that state, Hawaii. At that stage, Hawaii was the most dependent state on fossil most fuels, dependent. right? Yes. So we are at that at that moment in time, we're importing six billion dollars with a B uh, of fossil fuel, five billion dollars worth of oil, a billion dollars worth of coal. Thirty percent of the oil goes to jet fuel. Thirty percent of the oil goes to ground transportation. Forty percent, or two billion dollars, goes to making electricity and a billion dollars of coal goes to, that's three billion dollars of fossil fuel. In the mecca of renewable energy, we are the southernmost state in the country, so we have the best sun, we have trade winds to die for, that means 95% of the time there's a very strong wind coming from the north, these are called the trade winds. Uh, you can see by the shape of the island that it, they, they've been f you know, blowing for millions of years. And uh, so we have all, and we have geothermal. You know, the Big Island is on, on the hot spot. Uh, we have serial lava events. If we just send some cold water down, we get steam back, and that's energy. And, you know, Iceland knows how to do it. New Zealand knows how to do it. I do not understand why we in Hawaii are <laughs> tripping over our feet about tapping into this great resource. And Hank, what percentage of energy? It was 5% renewable when you started, right? And it's now at what percentage? So, um, we've, you know, it, it's nice to have a mandate. And the, you know, everybody uh, in Hawaii was put on notice that they're going to turn off their fossil fuel infrastructure in 2045. And so every public company, every, every company has to think, what are we going to do? And so on. The main, the main feature of that 100% renewable by 2045 is that no one will build another fossil fuel power plant because it won't be amortized by 2045. But uh, it, the mandate isn't enough. Um, what we did was we incentivized the utility uh, to switch to renewables by allowing them to make more profit on renewable energy. So the, their old business model was they got to make 10% on the price of oil. What a stupid business model. <laughs> I can't believe it. this is the Hawaii state coming up with like this brilliant. It, what this means is that the, you know, the shareholders and the utility are happy when the price of oil goes up because they make more money. That's, a, that's an insane business model. Well, the price of uh, oil uh, in Hawaii for, for electricity is 25 cents per kilowatt hour. And so they get to make two and a half cents. When they put out an RFP, a request for proposal uh, for energy from independent energy producers, wind and solar came in at eight cents. And if you, add, if you add batteries, now we're up to 12 cents. That's half the cost. So instead of two and a half cents, we can say, you can make three cents. For them, that's a windfall profit. And for us, it's like a windfall savings. You know, for us, the ratepayers, it's windfall savings. Um, so, million and a half people paying three billion dollars a year for fossil fuel electricity is ridiculous. It's kind of taxation without representation. And every island, pretty much every island in the world has that same exact problem. Well, Hawaii is lucky, we have our own refinery, but other islands not so lucky, they're importing diesel. When they import diesel, it's even more expensive. So. Every island has the opportunity to switch to renewables, and that's sort of my next foray. Next plan. So two really important things that came out of that. First of all, incentives matter. And we've heard reference today to the IMF paper that came out last week showing that we're spending $13 million a minute on subsidizing fossil fuels. $7 trillion a year, 7% of global GDP, almost double what we spend on global education. What's even more interesting when you read the paper is that if we were to take that away, we would save 34% in emissions. There would be a drop of 34% in emissions 
by 2030 on 2019 numbers, which is pretty close to the 43% we need. So what Heng did a brilliant job of showing in Hawaii as a model was incentives really matter. And I'm a boring old economist, so I fully agree with him. And I was with Hank when Governor Brown, former Governor Brown of California, announced, oh, well, Hawaii's doing 100% renewable energy by 2045. Hey, so is California, sixth largest economy in the world. And I texted Hank and I went, oh, now I get it. So the work that Hank is doing, the demonstration effect, it now covers over half of all Americans are now covered by a state mandate for 100% renewable energy, all due to the work that Hank did in Hawaii. So pretty exciting. And when Hank took me to see his ranch, which is of course 100% renewable energy, and Hawaii has the highest number of solar panels on households now, it's number one with California number two, I think. It was really exciting. Per, cap per capita. Per capita, yeah. Sorry, thank you. Yes. The economist speaking. The, yeah. I need a lot of help from my friends. <laughs> but what is so exciting, tell us a little bit about what you're doing at the ranch, what you've done at the ranch, and your electrolyzer and the green hydrogen, and the powered with water and the low Right, so, um, you know, I started the foundation, and we passed a bunch of laws. One of the laws that we passed was a solar rebate to help the solar industry. And uh, somehow we are expecting about 30 megawatts of rooftop solar in a couple of years. But well, what actually happened is 300 megawatts. And uh, when we had 300 megawatts of rooftop solar, the utility goes, whoa, we can't handle that much uh, variable electricity on the grid. And so we're gonna stop uh, uh, allowing new uh, grid tie solar installations. And I'm going, oh my gosh, <laughs> this, is, this is a problem for Hawaii because it's a kind of microcosm of the world, but this is gonna happen everywhere. And so it's happening in Europe. There's so much solar that they, they can't give it away, the solar. So what's the answer to that? The answer is that you need to have storage. You need to have storage so you can take that solar from the daytime when it's shining into the evening when you actually need it. And so um, uh, I decided to take my ranch off grid. Uh, I have a little ranch on the big island of Hawaii. Oh, it's, it's funny because we were going to grid tie with the... Uh, with the utility, Helco is the name of the utility. <laughs> what an appropriate name for that company. And so, so uh, anyway, I took my ranch off grid and if you are off grid, to make it work, you have to make it work on a, on a cloudy day. So we have to overbuild the solar. The, the problem that we have is we have too much energy on a sunny day. And I think that's, that's gonna be a great problem for every island to have. What do you do with the extra energy? What we do is we make hydrogen. Now hydrogen is something that you can store for a long time. You can use it for trucks and buses for transportation. Uh, you can ship it to other places that don't have wind and solar and have them have renewable energy like Singapore. And I, I think the future of the world is that we're going to be creating hydrogen in places that have my preferred uh, source, which is geothermal, the ring of fire. We have so much energy coming from this planet. Uh, it's just untapped. And uh, hydrogen is the way to move that energy around. Fantastic. Hink, one closing thought on the Blue Planet Alliance and what you would like everybody here to do. And is it sign an MOU? How do they support the Blue Planet Alliance? So the, uh, the Blue Planet Alliance, our vision is to create a world in which humanity and nature live in harmony. If you have an NGO or a company that's like-minded, um, we will sign an MOU with, uh, uh, with you that says we agree to work together to create a, wor uh, a world in which humanity and nature live in harmony. Does anybody disagree with that? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and then we will add your mission to our list of missions because every NGO has a different mission and they're all important and they should all be incorporated. Now the Alliance, the idea is that we need to have a voice that's louder than OPEC. Last year I was at uh, COP27 and uh, there were over 600 OPEC representatives. Guess where uh, the next COP is? It's in Dubai, it's even worse. So, I mean, like, we're, we're letting the, uh, the fox run the hen house. It, it makes no sense. Uh, so, um, you can ha we can work together, and um, 
and fix this entire planet. This isn't, this isn't something somebody else is going to do, it's something that we're going to do. So um, my motto is we are doing this, we're absolutely doing this, there's no doubt in my mind. Uh, yeah, I have more than determination, I know that we're gonna do this. This is knowledge and uh, I need young people and, uh, and adults uh, to all get behind and say, yes, we are doing this. And uh, the transition, it's right in front of us. We have the money, we have the technology. All we need to do is just do it. What a beautiful note on which to finish. So everybody, if you're interested in being part of the coalition, please come and see Hank. And we are very excited, Hank, to have our COP26 high-level envoy Nigel Topping with us today and he is going to be mm. taking away the next panel but Nigel has been an incredible force for good with the race to resilience, the race to zero etc and uh, is running some fabulous coalitions of his own so Hank Rogers terrific work thank you for the role model that you are and uh, all that you're going to be doing in coalition and collaboration with us Thank you. We will do this, everybody. We are, we doing, are this. doing this. Everybody, we are doing this. Mm -hmm.